हेलो एवरी वन हेलो लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन सो वेलकम टू वी एनर्जी पॉडकास्ट एपिसोड वन सो मी माई सेल्फ योर होस्ट मिस्टर मनीष आई वर्क एज अ प्रोडक्ट मार्केटिंग मैनेजर एट वी एनर्जी टेक्नोलॉजीज टूडे वी आर हैविंग बिजी टैम हु इज बेसिकली वर्किंग एज अ कस्टमर रिलेशनशिप मैनेजर एट वी एनर्जी टेक्नोलॉजीज सो विल बी हैविंग अ वन टू वन डिस्कशन in regard to how vr is influencing the market and how vr will be the future and the present when it comes to upskilling and having some immersive experiences in lots of sectors so welcome to our first episode visit thank you so much manish thank you so much for the introduction uh it's a great feeling to be on your show and uh, uh share some ideas or share some of my thoughts with your audience as to uh how we are going to you know how do we perceive things as we move into the future it will be quite interesting to see uh, how technology dominates in the space especially when it comes to uh you know finding out customer behavior or how to improve customer relations or um, even find the nitty gritties of what uh how from a traditional you know marketing slash a customer relations perspective uh, how is how much of how many degrees of separation will it move in the future when immersive content or immersive experience comes into play awesome awesome so today we will be absorbing all the brains of visit when it comes to virtual reality and augmented reality so visit having said that i will just like to move on to our first question for our audience the first question is you know like what is your perspective towards virtual reality how do you see uh, virtual reality for the coming 10 years uh, well uh, it's going to be uh, i mean I, i'm no futurist in the first place i don't want to get, get into a uh, an argument or rather a conversation where i can gaze into crystal ball and see how it will look in the future but uh, the way i see it uh, it's something that we cannot avoid okay, okay. Uh, it's in my view uh, we have a large uh, section of population or uh, our demographics throughout the world uh, who have grown up or will be growing up in the next 10 years uh, who where video game consoles are very much a part of their lives okay. so and uh, for them it's nothing new uh for them engaging in a non real content um uh, whether that is your video gaming etc is a part of life so for them uh, for that kind of crowd or for that kind of population or slash demographics they would like to bring in that interaction as close as possible and when i use the word close uh it should it's in the context of the word real okay uh, you know that the engagement that you are having with the screen is not an actual one yeah and then what would happen if that engagement were the closest to reality right so that is where uh, virtual reality as a technology will come in and it has come in in many ways and it will push the envelope and this crowd will be ready will be will be ready to take it with both hands so in the coming years uh, i strongly believe that virtual reality will not be a uh, kind of it will not be talked about as in terms of an emerging technology it's very much a part and parcel of our everyday life where it will be used uh in some way or the other as in it's an immersive content so it's a content in another form which will be consumed by the uh, uh by common folk for sure got it got it so yeah i think it was a very interesting answer so hopefully we are seeing that you know virtual reality is right now you know like it's a present as well as the future so how you were lot of you know big fox in the industry are raising a question like what is the actual need of virtual reality so as a crm leader in the vr space is wanted to understand visit like how far have you guys been getting the needs when it comes to virtual reality and augmented reality it's a uh, it's a tough st- space to be in right now because uh the people who are willing to consume this content in a form of an augmented reality and virtual reality is a smaller percent of the population uh the main reason being that if anybody is consuming this content 
it will be the people it will be the big tech okay in this format uh it has still uh, the technology is still not democratized so to speak so uh but i do see this going into the future saying that okay um as a crm perspective let's be ready with it uh let's say for example uh into the future an industry like tourism okay now thomas cook has come up with a, with a very interesting concept called try before you fly wherein they create content of those tourist spaces where they give uh, vacations and uh, uh put it on a cloud and you can access it, access it by your virtual headgear okay and you try out that space in 360 degrees you know it's an immersive experience and if you really like it book book it now that kind of experience has never been there before as far as tourism as an industry is concerned at the best you can what what was there before you had uh, travel magazines uh, which had to kind of gloss out the pages with uh, the clarity of the photographs as close to reality wherein people will consume it and then say okay this is a great looking photograph now let's go to it but here is one thing you can actually enter that space without actually without being there in the first place and then experience it yourself and uh, go and visit it i mean it's just like how you shop for your clothes uh, you hold the material or the fabric in your hand you get a feel of okay this is good for my body and then you make a purchase now tourism has come to like that and what uh, uh, if i am not mistaken uh, the industry uh, that paper released by thomas cook says that they had more than close to 100% increase in their outbound flights from new york itself because of this technology awesome man that's really a good insight actually yeah okay so, so, uh, so now let us now to come back to the question i mean so what would that customer engagement would, would be like now the customer engagement that i say in such a case would be let's say the uh, an average tourist has that experience virtual experience made a purchase of that vacation goes there and comes back and then they what will the review be like it will be very interesting so they they will not say it's not a great place or a great this one they'll say they will either say a match or a mismatch between the content actually provided on vr versus the actual experience now that's something that the tourism industry is never you know done before so i am looking forward to it awesome awesome man so like uh i think you have come through a very long journey now in the vr ar space so just wanted to understand like how do you convince a client to adopt vr technologies so since we have uh, understood that you know vr is a very new space and people are still experimenting with this space then as a crm as a sales head how do you convince the client to adopt vr technologies for their business for their growth and all yes vijit please it's yeah for me uh, i would uh tackle it industry by industry uh for example if i have to take heavy machinery for example and the selling point over there would be uh, two things number one would be the prototyping of the product and number two would be even in sales for them for their sales now for heavy machinery industry the biggest problem would be their uh, the very size of it moving it across point a to point b for various sales functions or even in their r&d department etc to create a prototype now coming to prototyping uh, if a really good cloud infrastructure is available and a very good library of a digital twin for all these prototype for all the components that go into uh, uh, creating a new prototype is available uh, the company can easily create a digital prototype in the cloud space and you wear a headset a virtual headset you bring it right before your eyes and then share it with any number of people uh what their experience is like uh, 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 so instead of wasting money to build into a prototype you create a digital prototype from 
the digital library, test it out, and then finally make product one. So that's one of the biggest pluses of um, you know, VR as far as heavy industry is concerned. Now, the same heavy industry can use this for sales as well. Um, because heavy industry is what it, I would say it would be limited by a trade fair wherein they can bring their own entire industry to uh, trade, uh, entire machinery or the gadget to the trade fair and show them what it is all about. Okay. Or it is in the hands of a very good, um, uh, what do you call it, a salesperson with a very good brochure, etc., to uh, make a sales pitch. But with this, you create a three dimensional image in a virtual space. You give it to the client to wear it, and you explain the entire thing in in the closest thing to reality, with even blowouts, uh, markers, and they know that okay, this is the product that we are going to get. So it'll be it'll be quite interesting, and also it'll make job much easier for the sales team as well. Awesome, yeah. Uh, so visit, I think. Uh... So you are basically trying to say that try to figure out what are the pain points and try to, you know, like map those pain points with the 3D and the VR simulations and, you know, how VR and 3D can actually help them, you know, to boost up uh, the sales cycle, maybe their product cycle, maybe and lots of other things. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Got the point. So moving on to the next question we have. So what are the possible benefits that you think? Uh, VR can, uh, you know, like bring on to the industry. What are the possible benefits, you know, which we can count on uh, when it comes to VR simulations and 3D simulations? Yeah, when, uh, because you use the word simulations. Um, the, in my view, it's, it's the AR and VR are the best simulators. Because what in a way it does this, it keeps out the human element out of the harm's way in many processes when it comes to testing. Okay. You can simulate an environment, right? Uh, uh, some, let us say, for example, uh, you want to you know, create a huge um, uh, resident complex, right? Now, if you have all the parameters of the area available, of the region available, the soil data, et cetera, et cetera, and a very good computer software. You can actually build the entire model into cloud and simulate it for different environmental conditions. Okay. From earthquakes, from hurricanes, et cetera, et cetera. And you can even check the, and therefore check the tolerance of the very building to the natural calamities. Okay. Something uh, which if you had to build a prototype and test, would not give that, that a good result. So it definitely in that context, uh, a very good simulator for the real world situations before we actually get hit by it. So it's, uh, so it's definitely beneficial. And I, would, I really would want to see it take off in that respect. Awesome, awesome, man. So yeah, I think uh, it seems that VR has a lot of benefits. And people are already experiencing it across all the sectors. Now, when it comes to sectors, I just wanted to understand, you know, like what are the probable sectors that you see would be booming in the coming five years when it comes to VR adoptions? Okay. Uh, I, let me put it in a, in a grid. Okay. Uh, so column A will be training slash upskilling. Okay. Okay. Uh, train uh, column B will be simulation. Okay. Okay. And uh, column C would be, a, you know, uh, creating content as in a cloud content. Wherein, when I say that, technology will will definitely boom for creating more more and more online stories. So you will have training and upskilling. You have simulations and you will have storage. Okay. Got it. Below that, you will have probably uh, in a row, if I go row wise, uh, education for sure, retail for sure, okay. retail and real estate for sure, 
heavy engineering for sure. And the rows can go on adding on. So you can have, uh, you can, if you're on that grid, you can see, okay, in education, what will be available for upskilling and training? What will be available for simulations? What will be available for content? So you can you you need to map those dots, and for each of these industries, you know you can you should be able to find out where it comes to. So I would rather bracket it in that grid, and you can definitely add more columns because we don't know what this technology will throw up once people start using it big time. Got it. So you basically mentioned upskilling and training. So right. specifically, when it comes to upskilling and training. uh which sectors do you think you know will be given more preference using vr um i would say uh, one of the biggest beneficiaries of upskilling and training would be in the field of uh, renewable energy uh, the reason i say it is because uh, there is a huge thrust uh, especially in that space because because number one the public is also sensitive to the fact that uh, we are living through challenging times when it comes to climate change etc which till about a decade back uh, it was in the realm of you know the few wise men but now people have have direct experience with it and when conversations are getting more they each of us in our own small way are aware of you know we have to do something for this uh, one place that is there for us because if you look from a world from out here from through a telescope probably we are the only ones here right so we are only one earth so renewables is one thing that we are looking at now what would you do if we really have to catch up as in at a at a local level uh, electricity is uh, is a given we can't live without it okay uh, now we need solar panels right mm -hmm. uh, do we have the time and the energy wherein you can take an entire batch of people uh, take them through an electrical course of solar energy or do we do it in this way where okay you have people who are qualified technicians that is in india we have our itis uh, wherein they give the trade certificate uh, electrician trade certificate and we understand okay the basics of electricity is known all we have to do is pivot his training experience in terms of solar okay so you just need to add a few hours or maybe you know say 120 hours of training and give that person uh a certificate saying that he is certified to be a solar technician oh. there vr will definitely come into force because you need not have a classroom experience the entire content is in on cloud can be delivered through a vr headset okay, okay. and once it is done through the vr headset and this content can also be assessed it the people can be graded and okay. the best part about it since it is online the person who is undergoing the training can take it for reference at any point in time he or she need not take down notes okay right and go into the field with more confidence awesome so and it has been proven that this kind of a vr training actually upskills the upskills people a lot more faster than the conventional way of training in even lot of more lot more than the browser driven training that is available right now okay uh, if i am not mistaken i think it is pwc or between i don't know between pwc or deloitte when they did a research they said that people are more ready to face the actual world through upskilling via a vr training versus a conventional training they are 40 times more faster 40 times 40% 40% more faster awesome man. sorry yeah right so why not grab it you might have a certain um pay, uh, hiccup when it comes to the initial investment but then you will recover it in the time that people actually get into the trained workforce the faster they get into the trained workforce the much better turnaround time the companies will have in delivering the product yeah therefore a more satisfied customer look at it in, look at i would rather look at it in that perspective okay so definitely we should be looking at that and renewable renewable space is definitely one area where vr can do a great job okay so bijit like just wanted to understand here that why specifically renewable energy only 
because as you said previously there are lots of industries like heavy industry in this there is a heavy industry there are automobile sectors and lots of other sectors as well so why specifically we are training in renewable in renewable energy if i look at the country like india you know uh, most of our industries in i see there are pockets or rather there are uh, you know uh, you can if you draw if you take the map of india uh, it's very much uh, 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 you can see on a uh, you can see these red dots so when it comes to software the red dot will be in background okay when it comes to uh, you know small scale industries or something like that you will have one red dot or red belt of a belt in tamil nadu where from coimbatore salem like that then you will go to north you will earlier it was ludhiana i mean i hope it's still now there then mumbai in its uh, adjoining um, hinterland uh, of mumbai uh, which is a good hot spot for small and medium scale industries like that and then uh, you know like, like that there are hot spots every industry has its hot spots uh, tirupur etc for its uh, uh, you know garment industry similarly in maharashtra there is also another for garment industry punjab has one more garment industry so all industries have their industrial hot spots here and right but now let us take about renewable um, india has an ambitious goal of two thing to of a manifold of there are two kinds number one you have to make every single house electrified and also we will have to you find some other way of actually getting the electrification done when there is a limitations of coal or hydroelectrics okay so what do you do solar panel actually fits that bill perfectly well a few solar panels you can install on the house on the rooftops and get the house running so there is a larger area that you can cover and therefore a larger spectrum of people that you can train and make themselves resourceful in this industry so that's why i am particularly um, you know quite interested for this training to come into the renewable space because it gives up a lot more in the opportunities for people in the far flung areas of this country which otherwise they would have to come to the cities or small towns to find one uh makes sense makes sense vijit so you yeah, adding every uh, things are making a lot of sense so since you are more optimistic towards renewable energy and virtual reality training specifically for renewable energy I just wanted to understand like what are your future plans for we energy technologies how you guys are taking it ahead well uh, currently we are uh, talking to a lot of people uh, making them understand what we are doing because we have a very good team behind us uh, developing content uh, and uh, in for various uh, inputs like whether if, even for vr there is oculus there is stc vive these are the kind of uh, devices through which output can be delivered and uh, creating content for the space is not as easy as how other ed tech companies would do uh, we need subject matter experts uh, we also need a storytelling da uh, a dashboard of photo storytelling which is quite different from the regular education content because there are no mistakes that can be made over here it has to be 100% full proof so we have developed some re really interesting concepts and uh, we have had some really good uh, uh, what, what you call um, pointers some people have been interested and uh, we are you know looking forward to deliver this product to them and you know see what their experience is with this product because we are very confident that it will do really really well awesome awesome even we are excited to see how we energy will be rolling out uh we are training products specifically wind for renewable energy so just a last concluding question before we start our rapid fire round visit so you know like what is your future take of vr for the for the coming year i just i don't want the five years journey just you know like how optimistic are you for the coming year like for 2022 please ah uh, okay that i i would know i mean i really wish that uh uh we are will be more about uh, engaging tech than a gaming console that's for sure i mean i want it in the, the coming year 
to happen that way. Uh, and the reason I say that is because uh, for more than 18 months now, the pandemic the pandemic has you know has taken the office from an office space to the house house space. So earlier there was something called work life balance when it came to saying that okay, well, what is work life balance? You leave home, go to the office, come back home. But now home itself has become an office. Is it <laughs> yeah, very true? Right. Yeah. So yeah, the very concept of work life balance has taken on a very different argument, and that let the topic is for discussion for some other day. But uh, in that scenario, I would really want to see a VR headset, you know, take that space, uh, a virtual office space where you put it on, and some of the conversations can be very personal. Okay, you don't need to sit before an entire huge screen and then you know, tell others keep quiet, keep quiet, keep quiet, or something like that. You put on a headset; it's an immersive one, and then. Uh, conduct your business as usual. So I really want that to happen by 2022. I don't know whether how far it will happen, but I hope it really happens. So, Bijit, I personally feel let's make uh, let's hope that 2022 will be a great year for VR and AR developments. So now yeah. let us move to the rapid fire round questions. So hopefully you are excited for that as well. So you oh, just absolutely. have to quickly select, you know, your favorite. Uh, I will say. What is your favorite preference among the two options that we'll be giving you? The first oh, question wonderful. is it uh, virtual reality or augmented reality? Which will be your first preference? Augmented reality. So, can you reason specific reasons for that? Uh, I mean, uh, as much as I love virtual reality, uh, but I don't want to miss out the real world. Okay. You understand? Uh, it's it's a. I feel that augmented reality. Is one tech one tech that can help me when it comes to mobility? Okay, I, I am on the move. It is augmented reality which will uh, assist me into the uh, will be more of an assistance than a virtual reality where I put an entire thing. I am cut off from the rest of the surroundings. Either I have to be seated or I have to surround myself in a space. So when it comes to mobility, uh, human mobility, the technology between AR and VR which will be of more assistance will be AR. So. It's my personal choice. Uh, again, it's uh, and I, I respect anybody's decisions of disagreement with, with regards to that. Okay, awesome, awesome. So the second question is, uh, what do what will you prefer as a VR headset, Oculus Quest or HTC Vive? Uh, I would want an HTC Vive. Okay, so that is pretty straightforward. <laughs> yeah. So the third question is quite, I will say, out of box, like it won't be relevant to the VR and AR space. So what will you prefer? You will prefer a Zoom meeting or a, you can say a one-to-one -one in person conversation. What will be your preference? Uh, okay. Uh, then nothing can replace a human interaction face to face. Okay. Okay. Uh, so my first choice will always be a human interaction. Uh, the uh, when it comes to uh, a virtual space, a meeting like this, uh, I think it has to evolve a bit more. Uh, uh, partly because, see, when it comes to face-to-face uh, uh, -face interaction, uh, you know, we have evolved a lot over centuries, rather. Etiquettes have evolved. Uh, cultures have evolved. And, uh, you know, a lot of us have taken many a personal journey. So, therefore, our we have evolved in our the way we conduct a conversation, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Uh, and therefore a face-to-face -face conversation. There is a certain amount of one brings a certain amount of restraint. One brings a certain amount of uh, you know uh, a certain amount of thought process, uh, which has been refined over a long period of time. Now this kind of interaction is something new. Uh, we sometimes get carried away saying that okay, you are at your home, I am at my home. So it's like, okay, it's like a friendly banter. Exactly. So lines get blurred. So I think uh, in that say, in that sense, um, a lot of etiquette, a lot of restraint has to evolve as well. Uh, so my first choice will always be a human to human interaction. Uh, and uh, this would be second. Awesome. So the final last question, which is your favorite food? On a serious oh, note. Lovely. 
<laughs> For me, nothing beats a biryani. Is it? <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, so it was really nice talking to you today, and we got to explore lots of aspects of VR and how we energy is building VR training specifically for renewable energy. So we will be more than excited to see how we energy grows in the coming days, and under right. your leadership, definitely we'll see lots of uh, plannings and lots of things going on inside we energy. Thanks a lot for joining this short call visit. It's a great pleasure to have you in this call. Yeah. Thank you, Manish. Thank you so much for this for this time, and uh, it was really pleasant talking to you. Yeah. And yeah. thanks for your wishes for V Energy. And definitely we'll meet again. Definitely. Thanks so definitely. much. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you.